This is Colin Selick of Binghamton University. This lecture covers curvilinear motion, rectangular components. It comes from the book Dynamics by R.C. Hibbler, chapters 12.4 through 12.5. Today's objectives, the student will be able to describe the motion of a particle traveling along a curved path and relate kinematic quantities in terms of the rectangular components of the vectors. We'll go over some applications, cover general curvilinear motion, cover rectangular components of kinematic vectors, and do some problem solving. So here's a stunt plane, and there's a radar tracking it, and it can get its x, y, and z coordinates relative to a fixed point on the Earth as a function of time. How can we use that data to determine the velocity and acceleration of the plane at any instant? Let's define general curvilinear motion. So a particle moving along a curved path undergoes curvilinear motion. We often use vectors to describe this motion. So we have this particle P that's traveling along this path defined by the path function S. The position of the particle at any instant is designated by the vector R. R is a function of time seen here. Uh, both the magnitude and direction of R may vary. So if the particle moves a distance delta S along the curve during the time interval delta T, the displacement delta R is determined by the vector subtraction r prime minus r. Now let's define velocity. It represents the rate of change in the position of a particle. So the average velocity of the particle during that time increment delta t is delta r over delta t. The instantaneous velocity is the time derivative of the position dr dt. Note that the velocity vector is always tangent to the path of motion as seen here. Uh, the magnitude of v is called speed. Now, since the arc length delta s approaches the magnitude of delta r as delta t approaches zero, the speed can be obtained by differentiating the path function s, as seen here in ds dt. Let's define acceleration. That represents the rate of change in the velocity of a particle. So, as seen here, if a particle velocity changes from v to v prime over some time increment, the average acceleration is the change in velocity over the change in time, which is the vector subtraction v prime minus v over delta t. The instantaneous acceleration is the time derivative of the velocity, as seen here. Now let's talk about a hodograph. A hodograph is a locus of points defined by the velocity vector. So we take the velocity vector from here, v and v prime, and we put their tails together at some point o prime then the locus of points defined by those velocity vectors as a function of time is called the hodograph. And the acceleration is tangent to the hodograph. In general, the acceleration is not tangent to the path function. So let's talk about rectangular components. Rectangular components are relative to some fixed frame of reference. So we have a fixed frame x, y, z. Now the position of a particle can be defined by this vector r, and we can break up r into its rectangular components. So x in the i direction, y in the j direction, and z in the k direction, as seen here. Now these x, y, and z components can be, may be all functions of time. Uh, the magnitude of the position vector is the square root of some of the squares, and the direction of r is defined by the unit vector r divided by its magnitude. Now let's talk about velocity and rectangular components. So the velocity vector is the time derivative of the position vector. Remember the position vector is xi plus yj plus zk. So we want to take the derivative of that with respect to time, which you see here. Now note that the unit vectors ij and k are constant in magnitude and direction, so they're constants. So this equation then reduces to this. So the velocity is just v sub x and i plus v sub y and j plus v sub z and the k. Uh, we denote v sub x as x dot. That means the time derivative and it's also dx dt. These are all equivalent terms. Uh, the magnitude of the velocity vector is square root of some of the squares. The direction of v is tangent to the path of motion, so it's tangent to s as seen here. Now let's talk about acceleration. The acceleration vector is the time derivative of the velocity vector. 
So we see that here. And it just is acceleration in the x times i plus acceleration in y times j times acceleration in z times k. And again, a sub x is the first time derivative of the velocity in the x, which we denote by x double dot. And similarly for y and z. The magnitude of the acceleration vector is square root of some of the squares. The direction of a is usually not tangent to the path of the particle like velocity is. Let's take an example. A box slides down a slope described by the equation y equals 0 0.05 x squared m, where m is x's in meters. We're given some initial conditions here. At x is 5 meters, the velocity in the x is minus 3 meters per second, and acceleration in the x direction is minus 1.5 meters per second squared. We want to find the y components of the velocity and the acceleration of the box when x is equal to 5 meters. So we're looking for uh, y dot and y double dot. As we noted earlier, the particle's velocity can be determined by taking the first time derivative of the path equation. Uh, and this is the path equation right here. So we can take the second derivative of the path equation to get the acceleration. So let's do that. So here is the path equation y is equal to 0.05x squared. Now we want the derivative of y with respect to t. So we're going to take advantage of the chain rule where if y is some function of x, then dy dt is equal to dy dx dx dt. So let's do that. So y dot is the derivative of y with respect to x. So that would be 2 times 0 0.05 times x times dx dt. And that reduces to this equation right here. Now we want to find the acceleration component by taking the time derivative of the velocity y dot. And here we're going to take advantage of the product rule where if you have some function m, which is a function of x, and some function n, which is a function of x, and we want to define y as m times n, then the derivative of y with respect to x is the derivative of m with respect to x times n plus derivative of n with respect to x times m. So let's do that here. So we, here we said we want to take the time derivative of this function right here. So it's the derivative of the first term, which is x dot, times the second term, which is also x dot, plus the first term, which is x, times the derivative of the second term, which is x double dot. So now I have an equation for y dot and y double dot. So now we can just substitute in the x components of the acceleration of velocity to find y dot and y double dot. So we were given that x dot was 3 meters per second, and x double dot was minus 1.5 meters per second, and that's at 5 meters, x equals 5 meters. So since from the previous slide, y dot is this equation right here, we're interested at the time when, uh, at the point when x is equal to 5, so we substitute in 5 for x, and x dot is minus 3, substitute that in there. So y dot at x equals 5 is minus 1.5 meters per second. And likewise, the acceleration, this is from the previous slide, so we just do the substitutions, 0.1 times x dot squared, so it's minus 3 squared, plus 0.1 times x, which is 5, times x double dot, which is minus 1.5. And that comes out to be 0.15 meters per second squared. So y dot is negative, so it's pointing down, and y double dot is positive, so it's pointing up. Here's another problem. A particle travels along a path y equal 0.5 x squared. Initial conditions, when time is zero, x and y are both zero. We want to find the particle's distance and the magnitude of ex its acceleration when uh, at time t equals one second if the velocity is equal to this function, five times t. We can determine x and a sub x by integrating and differentiating v sub x respectively. So that's v sub x, so we can integrate and differentiate that, and that will give us x and a sub x. And then we can find the y component of the velocity and acceleration by taking the time derivative of the path. We'll use the chain rule again. And then we can determine the magnitude of the acceleration and the position. So let's do that. So the velocity is known. It was given as 5t. So at t is equal to 1 second, the velocity is 5t per second. 
So we integrate the velocity function over time to find the position, which we're doing here. So v sub x is equal to 5t, we integrate this, and we get x is equal to 2.5t squared, and at t is equal to 1 second, uh, x is 2.5. So this is x sub 1, this is x dot sub 1. And acceleration is the uh, derivative of the velocity, which is 5t, so it equals to 5, so this is x double dot, it's a constant. So let's look at the y components now. We have this function y is equal to 0.5x squared. So the position is just 0.5 times x squared. And at one second, x is 2.5. So this comes out to be uh, 3.125 feet. This is uh, y. Now the velocity y dot is the derivative of the path function here. We use the chain rule just like we did before. And we come up with this function right here, which reduces to this. So at t is equal to one second, we substitute in these values from up here and to here, and we get 12.5 feet per second. Now we want to differentiate the velocity, which is this, with respect to time. Now we use the product rule like we did before, and we come up with this equation here. Making the substitutions, we come up with y double dot is 37.5 feet per second squared. So the position vector is xi plus yi, where x is 2.5 and y is 3.125. Its magnitude, the square root of sum of the squares, comes out to 4 feet. The acceleration vector is ax in the i plus ay in the j. ax is 5 feet per second squared, ay is 37.5 feet per second squared. Magnitude is square root of sum of the squares, or 37.8 feet per second squared. This concludes this lecture. Next up is 12.6, motion of a projectile.